Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. It has been a while, hasn't it? Um, I haven't filmed a video in quite a few weeks. I've been really, really busy, um, but I'm here now. And in all fairness, I was really um and ah whether I should come and film any more videos for YouTube. I'm not 100% sure if I really have a place here. Um, however, saying that, all those things that I got for Christmas, I put in a box and I left it out and I haven't put anything away. So I thought, well, at least do this video and see how I feel. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, yeah, where I kind of stand, um, with this, like I really enjoy doing it, but it's, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel a little bit lost, I guess. Um, so I am, um, yeah, let me know if you, if you do enjoy watching my videos because maybe that'll reassure me a bit, but that's not, that's not what this video is for. That's not like, let's fix my head. Um, that's, this is just uh, what I got for Christmas. So I hope you had a lovely Christmas if you do celebrate Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, then happy holidays. If you don't celebrate any holiday around the end of December, um, then, I hope you just are keeping safe and well. And um, yeah, it's lovely to see you. Um, I don't want to boast about any of the gifts that I got. I, it's just a video that I love watching and um, I do enjoy filming these. So I thought I would show you what I got for Christmas and I'm very, very grateful for everything that I did get. So yes. And as well, at the end of this video, I'm tagging on um, some stuff that I've got recently um, that I didn't get for Christmas, but since I last saw you, these are things that I have acquired. I think that makes sense. So starting off, it's just going to be random assortment, no order whatsoever. It's there in my life. Um, first things first, I got this. I don't want to put too much glare on it. Is that good? That's not good, that in there. Um, so this is a beautiful picture that my brother and sister-in-law got me. Obviously of Pop, they got someone to draw him. I knew something was going on because they said, can you send me some pictures of him, of his face? So I knew something was going on. Um, but yeah, I think that's just so, so lovely. And look how gorgeous he is. I actually still don't know where I should hang this. Um, obviously it needs a pride of place. <laughs> um, but I'm still I'm in an iron where to actually put it. So at the moment it's just kind of knocking around somewhere where I can see see him. Um, the, the drawing version and then obviously the real one. Uh, he's currently lay at my feet. So um, yeah, I really love that. My... Fiance's mom got me something which is so practical and actually something that I really wanted, which is a hot water bottle, but these long ones. I don't know if anyone's had one of these, but I have, so I do suffer from really bad period pain and I get, when it, when it happens, I get it all around the front and then it goes around to my back and it's in my side and it's just like, sometimes I end up with a hot water bottle and I'm holding it and then I've got a heat patch like, so I've got a hot water bottle at the front, heat patch on my back, something like that. So I thought this, a long one which is round, will actually really help because it can get my front and my back. Um, or it can get my back and my sides or, you know, whatever. Um, I thought that'd be really, really handy. I also wanted it in pink and she managed to find me a pink one, which is lovely. So I'm very, very grateful for this. So thank you. Very practical present, but one that's definitely needed. <laughs> Speaking of practical uh, she also got me a things to do list i write to do lists practically every day uh, just on a scrap of paper so actually this is really rather handy to have particularly when i'm super super busy and i'm sure i'll get through that <laughs> this year and then my mom got me these lovely wipeable coasters in this lovely pink with flowers on it i was like oh that's very very me and it can replace my ones that aren't looking so fresh my mom also got for us this lovely lovely uh ornament that i think we're gonna put somewhere maybe the conservatory because it is two gorgeous rabbits i remember i saw this and i was like oh bunnies if you didn't know my favorite animal is a rabbit um i love rabbits don't get me wrong i love dogs but I love my dog really, <laughs> that's what I mean to say. But uh, yeah, I love bunnies and so, yeah, whenever I see something that's bunny related, I'm like, oh, look. Um, and I just think it's so, so pretty and I love big bunny, little bunny, 
Um, I just think it's absolutely sweet. I think that'll look really nice in my conservatory as well. And I'll try not to break it. I'm worried about snapping like ears and things, but yeah, really love that. And then I was so, so proud of mom. Um, oh no, just rip the bubble up. Try to keep it nice and clean, nice and safe. And I just go ahead and rip the bubble up, it's all right. Um, so my mom, when I opened this, I was like, no. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous sis. And the reason why I'm super proud of my mum is because I find lots of my like little vintage bits that I have around the house in charity shops. And, um, you know, some things are absolutely gorgeous and they're kind of like one of kind, like I've got some beautiful teacups and saucers. I've got like a um, cake plate and little, um, like a cake tray and then cake plates to go along with it. And I've got lots of different bits and bobs and some trinket dishes and things on my dressing table and all these different things. And my mom's like, oh, that's nice. But if you got it from like a charity shop. And so I think she's always kind of looking, keeping an eye out. And then she said, I found this in a charity shop. And I was like, well done, that's amazing. And she immediately thought of me, it's called Apple Blossom, which is just gorgeous. It's beautiful, beautiful florals. I love florals. I love pinks and purples and this like gorgeous pinky, verging on kind of like a mauve is just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to use this as a trinket dish in my bedroom so I'm, I'm going to put things like um my everyday jewellery that I wear kind of put it there and then like my perfume and deodorant and stuff like that and a couple of hair bubbles I think I'll just make my bedside look really really tidy instead of mess um but yeah I just love that and yeah it means so much to me as well that she found something vintage because she knows I love vintage. <laughs> and my dad too, my dad also got it, but um, my mom's was the, was the one that hunted it down, so to speak. And then gifts off my other half. Um, he got me a range of different things, starting with, I haven't even got out the Sealy thing yet, uh, but it's the Agatha Christie Miss Marple calendar for this year, 2023. And I want this not to write in, but just to look beautiful. Um, I can't wait to flick through it and I'm going to pop it up. I'm gonna put it on my Agatha Christie shelf. Um, but as I said, I'm not gonna write in it. I'm just gonna look at the beautiful, beautiful images um, which match the new books that have come out, the new Miss Marple books that I've collected a few of, as you know, um, but I just think it's just, Stunning. There's 12 full length novels of Miss Marple, so it works out perfectly to do a calendar because obviously it's 12 months a year. So I'm very grateful he got me that. The other thing that he got me, which wasn't bookish, is a mug and it's also Agatha Christie. And this is The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding Mug. And then on the back it has a quote which says, Hercule Poirot shivered. The thought of the English countryside at this season of the year did not attract him. And I just think it's really nice. I love a mug. I tend to just have mugs on my shelf that I love and think are beautiful and don't use. I definitely should use some of them more because what's the point in having them? Um, but you know, they're a decorative piece and I love it. And it's got to have a very special place um, on my shelf. I even really like the box too. I think it's nice to use her signature and things. So yeah really pleased with that they do um, a whole range of those ones but that's the one that I kind of like the most I also really liked the one which was the body in the library however <laughs> I say that I already have a mug that is the body in the library themed so I'm like mm. he also kind of got me a couple of dvds oh no I just dropped one the first one he got me is 101 Dalmatians in this classics sleevey thing that I collect them in Whoosh. I so before Christmas I went to watch 101 Dalmatians and I have a collection of these because um, they're all numbered on the side. So this is classic 17. And I was looking through and I was like, I know it's one of the earlier ones. And I was looking through and I was like, where is it? Because I'd watched it probably about a year ago. I was like, where is it? I must have it because I've watched it, but I don't have it. So I must have watched it on the TV. And I was, I was genuinely looking everywhere for it and I don't have it. And I was like, oh, I don't have it. So now I do have it. And now I can watch Andrew and Dalmatians because I was really craving it over the Christmas period. I don't know why, it's not a massively Christmassy film, but I don't know. I think I just, I just craved it. Sometimes you do, don't you? Or I do watch my favorite Disney films like over and over again, like Aristocats. I watch that all the time. <laughs> I have a problem. And The Sword in the Stone. I love that one. Yeah, just great. And then 
The other DVD he got me was Victoria Series 1. So this was an ITV series and they've done several of these and they're really popular and I didn't really watch any. I kind of, I, I've watched a couple of episodes here and there but I've never like sat down and watched a series and there's a couple of series that I want to do that. I want to do that with Victoria. I also need to watch The Crown. We got Netflix like a Netflix subscription so that I could watch The Crown and I still haven't watched it. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. So I need to uh, spend time watching Victoria, which I think I might do tonight. Might have a bit of an early night, get into bed, watch an episode of Victoria. And um, yeah, how beautiful is Jenna Coleman? Like it's stunning, stunning. Um, I'm sure you know, me and Queen Victoria don't always necessarily see eye to eye. Um, I think there's a big old clash of personalities there. Particularly when you look at the women's suffrage movement, like she didn't understand why women would want the right to vote. And it's like, of course you don't, because you're in such a privileged position, you're queen. Um, so, yes. And there's certain things that she did with them. Um, it was Flora, wasn't it? And and the doctors and the you know, the, there was, she turns out she um, she was actually really extremely unwell, but Queen Victoria made her go through this really embarrassing um, ordeal. Um, I think I'm thinking of Flora. Brain. Um, off the top of my head. <laughs> so yeah, but perhaps watching the series will change my mind about her. Um, who knows? And then he also very, very kindly got me a few books. Starting off, oh, he got me this big one. Ow, I just scratched myself. This is 7,000 Years of Jewelry, edited by Hugh Tate. Um, this is what it says in the tin. Lots of jewelry from all around the world. Um, and I was flicking through it when I got it and I was like, this book's made for me. Boom. <laughs> Look, he's right there next to the introduction. It's only Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, Queen's favourite, obviously. Um, so yeah, really happy to get that. And I've been flicking through it and looking at the beautiful pieces and, oh, I just love jewellery. Can you tell? <laughs> um, and then he also got me Sensational Wonder Woman. Uh, this is a, quite interesting because this is a collection of like short stories, obviously told in comic book style, but each one is like a standalone story. So it doesn't follow anything, which I'm really excited by. And when I flick through it, look at the first page. Wonder Woman's like a 1950s housewife. And I loved that. I thought that was so good. So I'm really excited to, um, to read this because it's gonna be just like a short story collection. Um, and I haven't read any comic books for quite a while, actually. So I think that's a good way to kind of get back into it. Saying that I haven't read anything for a while, to be honest. And the other book that he kind of kindly got me, words, is Man's Best Friend by Scarlett and Sophie Rickard. So at the end <coughs> of 2020, I read the Rickard sisters' adaption of No Surrender, which is a book by Constance Maud, which is about the suffragettes, and they did a graphic novel adaptation of it. Loved it, did a whole video of it. It's on my channel, you can watch it. And this was one of their books. I think this might be their first book. I hopefully haven't got that wrong, but it's about a man and his dog. And I'm a woman with a dog. <laughs> um, I don't know what breed of dog this is. I have a border collie. <laughs> um, big old fluffy thing. They're all big old fluffy things, aren't they? All small fluffy things. Um, so yes, those were some of the presents. Then I have one more present to show you and then I have other books that I got myself. So bear with for story time. So me and my mum <clears throat> were in town and we were in, we walked into this charity shop, which I have to say is absolutely massive. It's huge. It's longer than the length of my house. I'm sure it is, it's probably not. Um, but it is really, really big for a charity shop, it's huge. And they've got furniture in there and everything. So you can probably guess how big it is. And I do have good eyesight, I have to say, but I walked through the door and right at the back, they have uh, um, a couple of glass cabinets. And from the doorway, I saw these dolls on top of the glass cabinets. Tudor dolls. Now I am a history nerd, 
I am a Tudor nerd. <laughs> um, and apparently I've got like, eagle eye vision when it comes to looking at Tudor dolls. Um, I do have a collection of Tudor doll things. I've got Henry VIII's top of his torso. Um, I've got Mary the First as a mouse. <laughs> as you do. Um, I've got my bunnykins that you know about. I've got um, other dolls and things up there as well. Um, and so I saw these, went up to them, were like, wow, they're big, they're gorgeous, love them. There was only three of them, so you can probably guess what I'm going to say, what they are. Um, they were £25 each. And I was like, can't really afford them. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna know whether to get one. And I was like, no, I'll walk out, and I left it. And I went straight on my phone and thought, can I get a whole set, a set of six, online? Is that possible? Turns out it wasn't. <laughs> At the time, um, when I was looking, I couldn't find these in England anywhere at all, let alone a set of six. So I went back and I was unknown um, which one to get because I was only gonna get one because I couldn't, I couldn't afford 75 pound, definitely not. Um, and I decided on my one, took her to the till um, and the, the person behind said, oh, well, are you only getting the one? I said, yeah, I can't afford the other. And she said, well, if you want all three, I'll do you a deal. So instead of 25 pound each, she did me the three for 75. And my mum went, tell you what, that'll be your Christmas present. And so this is my other Christmas present. And I have to say, it's one of the most thoughtful things that my parents have ever done, honestly. It's so, it's so kind because it's such a me thing. And um, yeah, so I'll show you what they are one by one. Um, they are, Vintage, three out of the six um, wise of Henry VIII, and they are all part of the Royal Heritage Collection. Now they are all in their original cellophane thing, and I really don't know what to do because this appears to be the original cellophane that they're in in 1990, and therefore it is keeping everything clean and dust free and stuff. However, the only thing with that is when you have vintage clothing, as a vintage lover of clothing, you never leave vintage materials in like the, um, you know when you go to a dry cleaner's bag, so that's kind of what this feels like, like dry cleaner bags. You never leave them in this because the material can't breathe, so that it should be taken out. They are already ripped in kind of places anyway, so I'm not, so it, it you know, I mean, it can breathe in certain areas, so I'm not sure whether to just completely take it off and I would appreciate your input. So here is Anne of Cleves. She's quite big um, in her traditional German dress. She looks beautiful. These are from 1990, so they're older than I am, just. Um, but I love absolutely how much they've gone to town on padding out her shoulders and her arms. German dress was heavy, heavy dress. It looked it, it felt it, and they've done a really, really good job of her. So I'm gonna put her back where she actually goes, which you'll see in all my videos now, which is there, that's Anne's place. Then you can probably guess who comes next <laughs> because it is the order of the six wives. So then we have Catherine Howard. Look how stunning. I almost went for Catherine Howard, I have to say, just because of how beautiful her dress was. So, so face in this gorgeous, gorgeous blue, and then look. I think they did the most beautiful job. Obviously they put her in silver. Um, the thing is with Catherine is she had the most elaborate wardrobe and she had the most wonderful textiles to make into dresses. And the Royal Heritage Collection has done a wonderful job of really showing that off. She's got a beautiful, beautiful French hood, the sleeves, just, it looks absolutely stunning and I love her to bits. So yeah, I did, I was on an arm between her. And then at one point I was thinking, because at one, I was thinking, oh, I'll get her. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna get her to par. And then I went, no, I'll get Anna Cleves. And I went back to Catherine Parr and it was just a oh. little. Um, the reason why I was so close to picking Catherine Parr, actually, if I could only get one, it would have been Catherine Parr. It's because Sula Castle is my favorite historic house and always will be. Um, and that is where Catherine Parr is laid to rest. Um, so here is 
Catherine Parr. Now she is the one that's in the most kind of ripped condition. Like her actual thing is just out, look. So that's Catherine Parr, like just completely out. Now it does say 103.25. Do you think that's the price? 103 pound 25p? If so what? Um, and there's another sticker on her here. But yes, she's beautiful in this beautiful, beautiful floral gown. And she is absolutely stunning. And you can probably guess where she goes. <laughs> so yeah, that's where they sit. And they're quite big. My When my mom and dad came into this room, they were like, oh, they're quite big, aren't they? I was like, yeah. I think it's hard to put them into like perspective of how big they are until you see them in situ. But I love them so, so much. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wish I had the other three because then I would put the other three like that side and then have six wise. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love and adore them and it's very special my parents to get me those. Right, anyway, <laughs> on to the bits that I got myself. So these are just bits that I picked up recently-ish. Um, first of all, I got a couple of the Style Me Vintage books. I already have a couple of these um, already. One is Style Me Vintage 40s, one is Style Me Vintage, oh, something else, can't remember. But I got me, myself, Style Me Vintage Wedding and Style Me Vintage Tea Parties. Um, the reason for this is because we get married this year and want to have a little kind of vintagey type theme uh, running through the wedding. So I thought this might help give me some wedding ideas. From an antique shop, I found for £12, oh, this big book. This is Vintage Fashion and Couture by Kerry Taylor. This is lovely. Look at this. You know I love ooh, any books on uh, vintage fashion. I'm all over it like a brush. I mean, look at that. Look at that just absolutely ridiculous. It goes all the way up to 2000s, which I'm not gonna lie, I don't have interest in the year 2000. <laughs> I lived through them. That was terrible fashion. Um, I had, I remember on the millennium, you know, New Year's Eve millennium, I had this black top, but then it had neon like highlighter pink and it said 2000 on it. <laughs> oh, fashion. Um, but look at this 1920s dress. Like, look how beautiful. So yes, I was really pleased to see this for £12. Um, anytime I see vintage fashion books and they're not too badly priced, I'm all over this because I know even if I found it, say, cheaper online, the postage would be a lot because it's heavy. So pleased with that. And then from charity shops, I got a jigsaw puzzle and two books. So the jigsaw puzzle I got was this one. It says Fantastic Fashions. This was £2.50. And I know it's a kid's jigsaw, but I do love, I just love a jigsaw. Um, it's still in its original bag, and then this is what it looks like. And I thought that was just so much fun. I thought that'll just be a nice afternoon to do, won't it? Nice and easy, 300 piece, done and dusted. And then also from a charity shop, I found Catherine of Aragon in this series. This is by Julia Halton, who also wrote the Anne of Cleves one. I am now only missing Anne Boleyn and Jane Seymour um, from this series. This was a pound. So I'm gonna go online and see if I can find the other books in the series and then I think I'd like to maybe do like a, a video where I read them all in the series and let you know what I think. And then I got this book, The Lovely Summer by Barbara Kerr Wilson. This is really funny actually because, so I handed in my dissertation, which I wrote about the suffragettes on the Wednesday. I was in the charity shop where I picked this up, not the day after, not the Thursday, the day after that, the Friday morning. So 48 hours later, I picked up this book. Guess what this book is about? <laughs> it's a fictional book from the nine, from year 1960, but it does discuss the women's suffrage movement. I mean, look at this, look at this beautiful image. It's like, how funny is that? Um, it was £7.50, so a little bit pricey for a vintage book, but it's very, very beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to reading this. And obviously I haven't had my fill of talking about the suffragettes. <laughs> um, I have a problem, so it's fine. But yes, that is what I got for Christmas and what I bought myself recently. Please let me know what you uh, got for Christmas, if you celebrate. Um, 
and also let me know just how you are, how you've been keeping and yeah, take care. Um, thank you so much for watching.